Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Marcus and I'm back for another review. I'm here to do my review for Greenleaf Season 3, Episode 10. This episode was called The Promised Land. So the episode starts with a scene where Lady May is at her, um, she's at Calvary and she's writing up an email to her children and her grandchildren basically telling them that her and um, Bishop are officially divorced. Now, I was confused because I felt like by those being her children and her grandchildren, she could have just brought them all together and told them that in person. Like, I felt like her, her sending out an email was something that should have been you know, done as, you know, telling the congregation that they were getting a divorce. But I feel like those, that's your family. You could have pulled them all together and told, well, I guess not Zora because, you know, she, we find out in this episode, she all the way in Atlanta. So, in the next scene, um, okay, so, Carissa talks about how she had been getting phone calls from people in the church about, you know, pretty much asking, you know, about Tasha and why she left. Now, one of the things that Carissa has been struggling with was trying to balance her career as an administrator and also being first lady. I think that she's been spending more time at the school than at church, and that's why Tasha has kind of been stepping in and, and fulfilling certain duties as the first lady. And so Carissa's whole thing is like, you know, Tasha's gone you know, I'm going to take that office that should be mine anyway and resume my uh, position as first lady. My thing is, why would why did they allow her to keep that office anyway if, you know, she was no longer the first lady? But anyway, so, you know, she was asking Jacob, like, you, you know, did she say anything about why she was leaving? And he was like, no, she just left. Now, my thing is, why didn't you just be honest with your wife and tell her, what it would well, I, I guess it kind of felt like because of his history he probably knew that she wouldn't believe him if all if he had just said it you know all they did was kiss she probably wouldn't have believed that that's just what it was because even later on in the episode you know carissa calls um tasha because jacob had been calling her and she wasn't answering so carissa was calling her to ask her about um what happened to the money because they have a new assist a new accountant and the accountant basically was telling carissa that money has been going from the church's account into this separate account and so she was calling her to ask her what happened to the money and you know tasha was drunk you know basically saying you know i'm not a bad person you know a person can do a make a bad choice but that doesn't make them a bad person uh you know it was just the kiss now I don't know. I think Tasha felt like that's the reason why Carissa was calling her because, you know, she, um, Tasha had said something to the effect of why do you sound so angry? So I think that she thought that maybe Jacob had told her what it was. And so she was like, it was just a kiss. And so Carissa was asking her like, so is that why you left? Tasha ends up hanging up on Carissa. Now, I'm going to pause and go back because there was a scene where Rochelle came to Tasha's house asking her like, girl, you know, why you not at Triumph? And she said, I quit. She was like, you know, pretty much, you know, I. her whole thing was, I've already did what I was supposed to do. So why should I stay there? Because she had already gotten Jacob to, to transfer the money to that other account. And, and you know, so in her mind, that's it. Um, and speaking of money, at first I thought that when it pertains to Rochelle and Bishop, at first I thought that um, she was going to, Get him, get him to give her the money. She was going to skip town and run off. But really what I think she's doing is she's going to invest the money for him. But I feel like she's doing it illegally and she's making it look like he was the one that invested the money. So when it all goes to the fan, he's going to be the one to get in trouble for it and not her. But anyway, so Rochelle comes to the house like, girl, what you mean you quit? Like, we got a job to do. And, you know, Tasha goes into saying, you know, Jacob's a good man and, you know, he don't deserve this. Which my thing is, I understand, you know, you wanting to get back at Bishop because you feel like he had something to do with your father's death. But what they got to do with Jacob? I guess maybe they still salty because, you know, Jacob took over the church after. But, I mean, that ain't, it ain't they fault that Basie had a, a gambling problem and couldn't keep up and, you know, was owing all these people money. Because, you know, that was Tasha's whole thing. Like, girl, if I had a man like Jacob, I wouldn't, wouldn't even be in this mess. Um... 
and you know Rochelle based I mean Tasha basically told Rochelle I'm done with this get up out of my house next time you come here I'm gonna call the police and I might just forget what I'm supposed to say so we see a scene where Rochelle goes out to her car and she picks up the phone and says we have a problem now I'm gonna put a pin stick a pin in there so we see a scene with Grace and Rochelle and uh, the lady that they're supposed to represent and she basically says that she's going to take the plea deal because the plea deal basically is her. She's going to be in jail for 20 years and then she's going to get out. And, um, you know, Grace and Rochelle are trying to fight for her to be exonerated. And at this particular point, she doesn't feel like um, she has a winning case. And also she kind of feels like because of, you know, what Grace dealt with as far as Mac is concerned, she feels like it's, it's bad representation because, mind you, First of all, um, like I said before, when Grace ran up to Mac's house, you know, she thought that Sophia was there. But once she realized that Sophia wasn't there, she still wasn't trying to believe, still wasn't trying to leave, which is the reason why they got into that brawl in the first place. And then, you know, between the time there was a i don't know exactly how long it was but there was a, a a great amount of time between the time where she stabbed mac in the neck and she actually called the ambulance to come to the house um and so you know that was the whole thing that's tossed around like she intentionally killed this man and it wasn't necessarily self-defense but anyway so coralie is like girl she so grace says well you know i'll step aside i'll step down or whatever but coralie is basically saying like girl i still you know don't want to do this you know i'm just going to take the plea deal so then Rochelle basically tells this story about how her and her sister grew up in the foster home because their mama went to jail and basically telling her, you don't want your kids to have to go through what I went through. And so that strikes something in Grace's head. And so Grace goes back and calls Darius, you know, you know, I got some old stuff on Rochelle Cross because mind you, when Darius looked her up prior, um, he couldn't find anything. So later on, Darius calls Gigi and says that there were three Rochelles that were in foster care during the time that she said she was in foster care, but only one of them have a sister. And the foster home that they grew up in, the family still lives at that same house. So Grace and Gigi, I mean, that's the same person, Grace and Darius go to the house and talk to the lady. And she, you know, um, basically they find out that the woman's last name is James. Um, and so that kind of, you know, gets the wheel spinning in Gigi's head. And so one of the last scenes that we see is that Gigi goes to Percy's house to see Bishop. And she basically tells him that, you know, Rochelle was Daryl James's daughter and she's Basie's half sister. Now going back, we see, um, uh, Maxine and May walking through the church. And this, so they go into first lady's office and, um, for whatever reason, Maxine is not feeling just sense of Butler. Remember, that was the lady that was in charge of the, um, whatever that ball was that Sophia and Zora w went to last season. Um, but, you know, Maxine basically feel like, girl, she's going to put everybody to sleep. And so she recommends Grace, but, you know, for whatever reason, you know, May and Grace don't see eye to eye. And we find out later on in the episode, you know, kind of why that is. And so, but yeah, she just don't, she don't see it for Grace. And so what Maxine says, well, I'll give Grace my slot. She don't want to, she don't want to let Grace speak. And, you know, Maxine was kind of trying to get, made a spill a little bit of tea. May said, girl, let me shut you down right here. So she goes over to talk to Grace and she tells Grace that, you know, she wants to help her, help put the word out about, her legal fund, you know, just send me an email about what you want me to say and I'll put it on my social media, on my website. I'll even do an infomercial if you want me to. And I'll even have my um, organization to cut you a check. And so she says, thank you, whatever, that's cool. So then she says, well, girl, what's going on with you and your mama? Uh, Grace says, I don't know what you're talking about. And so they leave it at that. So she goes back to... Um, make, well, not She don't go back to it, but this is later on in the episode where... You know, they were singing a little bit of Yes, Jesus Loves Me. I said, girl, May, you tried it. So, uh, Maxine basically wants to kind of like, girl, well, me and you can get up there and sing a little duet at the program or whatever. And so, once again, she asked her the question about, you know, okay, well, what's going on with you and Gigi? Maxine said, girl, you know... 
I mean, May said, girl, I don't have, you know, I don't have time for this girl. I, I got somewhere to be. You know, I'll see you later at the restaurant or whatever. And Maxine was like, girl, don't do me like this, girl. Don't do me. Um, because also in this scene, Corinne comes in and was like, you know, first lady, uh, Patty LaBelle said, no, no, boo boo. She's no, it's past the green leaf. She's nobody first lady anymore. So later on in the episode, we see that she does go to see Lionel. And she was like, girl, what do you want? He says, I want to talk to you about my daughter. Now, ever since, for the longest, it's been speculation that Gigi may be Lionel's daughter. Because when you look at her and you look at Charity and Jacob and even at the parents, it's like, ain't no way in the world they, that's, that's their blood. Um, you know, that's Bishop's blood daughter. And I think that that's the reason why she hates Gigi so much is because that, you know, her having an affair with Lionel was something that she tried to kind of sweep under the rug and put in the back of her mind. But Grace is a constant reminder of her mess up. Um, and a constant reminder that she can't hide what happened. Um, so, what else happened? So, we see a scene with Zora. Isaiah was at the radio doing an interview. Um, Y'all know he's a, a, a quote-unquote gospel singer. And so... One girl called in and was like, you know, when are you going on tour and can I get some tickets for me and my girls? And he was like, girl, you know, we are going on tour, but the dates are not set in stone yet. So, you know, you can hit me up in my DMs and we can and I can hook you up. And she was like, oh, I definitely do that. And I'm just like, girl, so you don't see homegirl sitting back here. So another girl calls in and was like, hey, I saw you on your live when you was at the mansion with them old folks. Um... So, you know, what it is, is that your girlfriend? And he s skips over that and basically says, you know, everything is everything. I'm good. We good because God is good. And so in the midst of this, Zora gets a ding on her phone and she gets a little notification. And Z Isaiah looks, so looks over at her like, really? Now, mind you, the interview and everything was over at this point. And so she in such a hurry, like, oh, my God, I'm sorry, trying to cut the thing on silent. I said, girl, that ain't love. Anybody that's got you scared like that, that ain't love, girl. And I, and I, and I got a little, a little glimmer of hope that she's going to come to her senses before it's too late. Because, girl, I, I, anyway. So, anyway, after the, the, the radio host get up and walk out, he walk up to her and went just like, girl, you making too many mistakes. So, later on in the episode, you know, she was cutting him a piece of cheesecake or whatever. And she basically was telling him that, you know, she had got a, a, a email or whatever from Spelman. They wanted to come and give her an interview. He was like, girl, too bad you can't go. She was like, what you mean? Like, what you mean I can't go? This is something I want to do. And he was like, did you come here for Spelman or did you come here for me? Um, I think initially she did come there, come for him, but I mean... When opportunity knocks, girl, you got to open the door. And so he was like, I need you to be here on this tour with me 100%. And she was like, girl, why I got to be here to support you when you couldn't even put these hoes in check on the radio station and let them know that I was your girlfriend? He was like, girl, first of all, I'm I, I, I'm not going to claim you until you do something or become worthy to be claimed. I'm just like, so you don't left your family to come be with this man. He's verbally and physically abusive to you. And not only that, he can't even claim you as his girlfriend. Like, girl, wake up. Like, I... <laughs> anyway. And so he was like, girl, last time I checked, Spellman don't um, accept high school dropouts. Um, I said, ooh. Anyway. So later on in the episode, we see a scene where he was on the couch sleeping. She opens up the laptop and she was reading her, uh, I guess, the acceptance letter or whatever it was they sent her telling her to come. So I don't know if... She's going to um, actually accept it or if she's going to skip town or whatever have you. So, But Zora girl, get it together. So let me just go to the end scene. So later on in the episode, girl, Rochelle comes back to the house because going... Okay, so that was another thing where, you know, Rochelle was telling Tasha, like, girl, we trying to do this, you know, for Basie. Basie this, Basie that. And Tasha was like, Basie's dead. Rochelle said, well, how you figure that? She said, if he wasn't still alive, where is he? Like, Because my thing is this. Because she didn't know that Rochelle was still keeping in touch with Basie. And so it's like, it's, it is kind of like, yeah. Because remember, the last time she spoke to him 
was like right after he had first left and he was basically telling her like girl we're gonna take the greenleaf family down but ever since then she ain't heard from her so it, it i mean i can understand why she would think that he's dead um so at the end of the episode you know rochelle come knocking on the door and tasha was just like rochelle girl i told you don't come back to my house so girl she pick up a lamp and run to the door like girl you got five seconds to get up off my porch or i'ma bust you in your head girl so Rochelle slides, step to the side, and we see Basie creeping from around the corner. She was like, oh, my God. And she dropped the lamp. And so he was like, Tasha. Tasha. And it wasn't like a Tasha, like, oh, baby, I'm so glad to see you. I missed you. It was like, Tasha, like, girl, we, me and you got a problem. And so she was like, because I heard you've been a bad girl. I said, ooh. So we going to find out, you know, what's going on with Tasha, how they gonna, how she going to try to spin this. Um... Because she looked like she was happy to see him, but then when he was like, girl, I heard you've been a bad girl, she kind of was looking scared, like, oh my God, what's going to happen? So, Charity um, was in her office, and the musical director from Pe Maxine's Church come and, you know, was like, hey, my name is Michael, I'm, you know, from Pastor Maxine's Church, you know, I'm coming here to go over, you know, the program or whatever. So they sit down and talk or whatever. He was like, well, can we pray first? Because I find that when you pray, it, may, it helps things run a little bit more smooth. And so she was like, okay, you know, because, you know, Charity, you know, she's going through what she's going through. So any man that's going to pay her some attention and any man that seemed like he just a little bit godly, she going to fall. And then, you know, he's in the, he's, you know, a musician or whatever too. So, you know, it's, you know, it's coming together. So the whole, now mind you, the whole time he was praying, he was talking about her like, girl, you know, I thank you for allowing me to work with Sister Charity, you know, because she's so good at what she do. And I know that we're going to make magic and whatever, whatever. So after they finished doing working or whatever, he was like, you know, the whole ministry team is going to meet at this such and such restaurant. Do you want to come? She said, yeah. Um, but I got to get home to my son. He said, oh, I didn't know you was married. And she was like, well, it's cute that you think those two go hand in hand, but I'm divorced. And, you know, because you may see him running through the church, uh, pooching through the church or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know he's gay. And she was like, he was like, well, I'm so sorry, you know, that he deceived you, and I'm gonna pray for him because he's deceiving himself. So later on in the episode, if she didn't, she didn't go to dinner, and he didn't go either because I've, you know, the purpose of him asking her to come because he wanted to spend time with her. And so, you know, well, he was like, well, girl, we can still meet and go somewhere else. And at first, she said, yeah, but then she kind of thought back and was like, well, I gotta. I need to address you on something that you said about Kevin being gay, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And one of the things that I will, I, I, I respect about Charity is that even though her and Kevin aren't together and it's obvious that she feels some type of way about the fact that he's gay and moved on with somebody else is that she wasn't willing to allow somebody else to disrespect him in that way. Um. Now, now here it is. I, I understand Christians that feel like... um. Or religious people that feel like a person that's gay is deceiving themselves. Um, and I, But it, I also feel like the way he was going about it, he was being extremely judgmental. Now, I do feel like on one hand, he was being deceptive when it pertains to him and Charity because I feel like he knew he was gay before him and her even got together. However, when you are in an environment where you are forced to live in this box and forced to be somebody who you're not and the person that you truly are is looked down upon, you know, it's hard for you to... I can understand how he ended up in the situation that he was in. I'll just say it like that. Um, but like I said, I do respect the fact that Charity, you know, would not allow herself to be involved with somebody that feels the way that feels the way that he feels of, about, you know, her family. Because even though they're divorced or getting a divorce, they're still family. Um, and so he basically was like, girl, you know, why are you sticking up for him? You deserve better. And she was like, I, I believe I do, but it, it ain't you, girl. So deuces to you. Um, I think that was pretty much, let me check my notes. I feel like, now I know I kind of skipped around. 
One thing I will say about Latoya Luckett, she is acting her hind part off because now we know that in the back of Rochelle's mind, she has this whole plan and stuff mapped out, but it does, she is really selling it like she's feeling the bishop because there was a scene where, you know, she was sitting in this office and, you know, she spoke to Bishop like, girl, what's the tea? He was like, well, what are you doing here? She says, well, this is the, the office for your daughter's uh, legal fund until we find her a permanent space. And so, you know, she asked him, are the rumors true about you getting a divorce? He said, yes. And she says, well, how about me and you go out for a drink to celebrate or maybe console, maybe the more proper term. So later on in the episode, we see them at Percy's house and, you know, they having this whole intimate thing and you know they um you know they was real cozy and real close um i do feel like now one thing i will say that i'm wondering if he's gonna actually believe Gigi is as far as you know her telling him that that's uh skates skates that's basically half sister or is he gonna not believe her and if he does believe her how is he gonna address rochelle because i do kind of feel like the reason why he was kind of setting boundaries when it pertained to Rochelle is because of the fact that he was married. And I think that he still had hope that him and May would be able to work out their issues. But now that he's legally divorced and they moved on, I do kind of feel like he probably would have went that next step with her. But now that all, you know, this has came out, I'm interested to see how he's going to, the relationship and the dynamic between, between him and Rochelle, how it's going to change or if it's going to change. Um... But like I said, I think that when it's all said and done, him and May are going to have to come back together to be able to f fight this issue. Um, now, in another scene, now mind y'all, you know, Tasha had told Carissa that her and Jacob had kissed or whatever. So she come back into Jacob's office going off like, girl, so is that the reason why she left? You know, because mind you, he had told her in the beginning, I don't know why she left. She just up and left. So now that the proof is in the pudding. Now he like, well, girl, yeah, we just kissed. And she was like, well, girl, first you told me it was nothing. Now it's just, so how did it go from a, from nothing to a kiss? And I'm not convinced that it was something else. Like, girl, you ain't, the, you, you ain't changed. You the same low down nigga that you was back in the day. How could you do this to me? I can't believe you put me through this. Like, girl, you the reason why uh, Zora left and I, me and Winky might need to leave too and walk off. Now I do feel like she kind of went a little bit too far when, when she threw it in his face that he the reason why Zora left. I think it was both of them, not just him. Um, and so in the midst of this, um, now, mind you, he had to turn his back to her and she go beating him in the back. And I was like, girl, fall back. Because when she started beating him in the back, it put me in the mind of that scene in Baby Boy where Taraji had, was punching, uh, was beating on Tyrese and then he backhanded her on the floor. I was like, Jacob, don't hit her. Now, in the midst of this, the accountant comes in and was like, girl, I'll come back later. And they both were like, well, girl, come in. He says, well, you know, it's $200,000 missing from the church's account. It went from these separate accounts into this one account and the money is just gone and i don't know where the money is and so um this is where we see jacob and carissa keep trying to call tasha and now she's not answering the phone um so now and this goes back to when she had him signing those papers and you know a lot of people um was like well girl you should have been reading these papers before you sign them but um in this particular situation, I understand why he didn't read them because, you know, this these folks is supposed to be Christian. So you would think or hope that you wouldn't have somebody trying to run game on you or trying to take money from you. But then at the same time, everybody in the church ain't saved and everybody that's saved ain't delivered. And everybody that's saved and delivered ain't really delivered. So, I mean, you, you really have to be careful about who you place in positions and who you allow access to private information and things of that nature you also got to use discernment because if he had any bit of discernment he would have knew that tasha won about nothing same thing with, with, with bishop obviously he ain't got no discernment um because he been you know been 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 a fool for rochelle since day one you know grace even though she didn't really know exactly what was up with rochelle she knew from the beginning that something about her wasn't right um, but anyway, that was pretty much all that happened on Greenlist. So I thank y'all for tuning in. 
Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to click that notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I post uploads. Also, be sure to follow me on my social media, which will be in the description box down below. And also, if you've missed any of my previous Greenleaf reviews, the link to that playlist will be in the description box down below. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace.